Okay, so we're gonna go through our cranial nerves now. So the first what test we're gonna go through is the olfactory nerve. Um, you can test that with soap or coffee or anything that's of distinctive smell. So what you do is ask the patient if you can cl uh, close one nostril shot and then just smell for me. Does that feel normal to you? Close the other nostril. Does it feel normal to you? Perfect. And that's just all you need to do. Anosmia can cause lack of smell, but it can also cause lack of taste. So you can ask the patient whether they have any problems with tasting their food at the moment as well. So our second cranial nerve test is gonna be for our optic nerve. Um, and the first test you can use for this is using a Snellen chart. So you would just ask the patient to um, close one eye for me, Shah. So just, yep, and then just read for me, third line down. M-P-H-T-A. Perfect. And you would then just use that and compare from one side to the other. Obviously, you can look at the patient's eye when they're doing this to see if there's any nystagmus or anything that looks abnormal to you. But obviously, it's just asking the patient really if they can uh, read the word, read the letters, and then also whether the one eye is the same as the other side. The other thing you can do with the optic nerve is look at visual acuity. So you can use a pen and you can basically go from visual fields from a high, middle, and then low, and look at at what point they can see the pen. And then from there, you'd be looking at both sides and comparing both sides. So again, in this case, it would just be saying, Shah, can you see the pen? Okay, looking straight ahead with the eyes, tell me when you can. No. Okay. Then you come from the middle. No. And then you come from low, low down. No. Perfect. And then you would then look at that on both sides. So the next test we're going to do are for the ocular motor nerve, uh, the trochlear nerve and the abducens nerve. So we're going to be looking at uh, light sensitivity. For this, I'm going to grab my phone in a second and use a torch. We're going to look at accommodation, so the pen to nose or looking at the person looking at the nose. And then also doing an H test with a pen and then looking and seeing what the pupils of that patient do. So just using a torch on the phone, you just come across, ask Shah to just look straight forwards for me and then you bring that light in towards the eye and then away and you're just looking for that dilation of the pupil and whether it dilates or not if it obviously doesn't or it, you have an abnormal reflex that would be something you'd mark down on your objective exam so for accommodation you'd either ask the patient to look and focus on their nose or what you could do is ask Shah to just follow the uh, blue tip of the pen and just come in towards the nose and back away and then again you'd be looking with this one at the eyes as that happens and comparing and contrasting the two eyes to see whether there's normal eye movement. Then what we're going to do is look at the general eye movement so for this we're going to take the same pen and we're going to form an H pattern with the pen about 30 to 40 centimeters from the patient's face. So we're going to come across, up, down, back to the middle, across, up, down, and back to the middle. And again, we're just looking at the eyes to see if they're following, to see if there's any nystagmus, to see if there's any abnormal symptoms when the patient does that. So for the trigeminal nerve, what we can do is first of all test sensation. So using a um, light uh, bit of paper or cotton wool bud, you've got three points on the, on the face. So we just say, does it feel normal? Yeah. Does it feel normal? 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 And then we can do the same thing with the blunt tip of a sharp tip, so the blunt end. So again, same thing. Does it feel normal? Does it feel normal? Does it feel normal? Normal there? Yeah. Normal there? And normal there. Perfect. So for the trigeminal nerve, for the reflex component, we can look at the corneal reflex. So with a light bit of tissue or again a cotton wool bud, we would just come in and look at the blink reflex. So we're going to basically just very lightly touch the cornea. And if it does that, then that's a normal reflex. For the motor component of the trigeminal nerve, then we can look at jaw function. So then from here, we can say, don't let me move you open. Good. And don't let me move you closed. Good. And relax. If I try and open, and I want you to stop me from opening your jaw. Good, and relax. So we're just assessing the muscle strength of the pterygoid muscles, masseteric muscles, and the temporalis muscles. So for the facial nerve, this is more of a motor uh, component. So we can ask uh, Shah to smile 
big smile as big as you can, to uh, puff out your cheeks, yeah, perfect, and then to tightly shut your eyes and relax, perfect. And then we're just looking to see whether that's something they can do or if there's any abnormal sensation while they're doing those things. So for the vestibular cochlear nerve, it's more of an auditory sensation. So we can come behind the patient and just ask Shah, can you hear this? Can you hear it this side? Can you hear it this side? Yeah. Does it feel the same? And then we're just assessing whether there's any difference uh, with the sound from ear to ear. So you can also use Ryan's test, which is using a 256 hertz tuning fork, where you would strike the tuning fork and place the end on the mastoid process. Then you would uh, ask the patient to let you know when they can't hear the tuning fork anymore. And then you bring the tuning fork to, to the auditory canal and you see whether they can hear it, which they should do. So you just ask Shah to say when it, she can't hear it anymore. And then you bring it here, can you hear it now? Yeah. yeah. So it, that, that's a normal reflex or a normal um, sensation rather would be that they, ca they can hear the, the tuning fork once it's placed over the auditory canal. If they can't, that would be an abnormal result. For the vestibular system, you can do more specialized tests like, like the hall pike maneuver that I'll put uh, alongside this video. Something I find useful is for the patient to fold their arms before I do the Dix hall pike maneuver. The patient's head is turned 45 degrees towards me. They are then lowered backwards so that their head is extended about 20 degrees over the back of the couch. If a patient has benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, you will often see their nystagmus within 20 to 30 seconds. Occasionally, the nystagmus will be seen up to a minute after their head has been extended. In view of this, if you really do feel that there's a strong history that would be suggestive of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, it is often worthwhile holding the head back in the extended position for up to a minute. To stop patients from closing their eyes, I explain to them that it's very important that they keep their eyes open. It is important to perform the Dix Hallpipe manoeuvre with the head both in the left and right lateral positions. I usually perform the Dix Hallpipe manoeuvre on the side that is asymptomatic first. So the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve um, are going to be asking the patient about whether they've had any symptoms with a horse uh, cough or any symptoms where their, their throat feels funny or they feel um, swallowing feels abnormal. Um, what you can also do is look at them taking a sip of water and see whether this feels normal to them. And the other thing you can do is um, get a spoon, depress the tongue and ask them to say an R ah noise and then look for the soft palate, the uvula and see whether that moves in a standard way. So Shah, if you open your mouth for me, I'm just gonna put your tongue onto the spoon and then just say an R. Ah. Ah. So I'm just looking inside the mouth, it's good. So what we'd be looking for is for the soft palate to elevate sym symmetrically on that R noise. Okay, so for the accessory nerve, what we can do is ask Shah to shrug her shoulders up, hold them there, don't let me push you down, and relax. So we're looking at the traps function, and also if you turn your head to the left hand side, Shah, hold there and don't let me move you across. Good, and relax. So resisted rotation of the head, and also resisted shrugging of the shoulders is gonna assess the accessory nerve. For the hypoglossal nerve, what we can do is look at tongue motor function. So Shah, what I'm gonna get you to do is poke your tongue into your cheek for me, inside your mouth, and hold it there, and don't let me push it across. Good, and then the other side, and don't let me push it across. Good, and relax. So we're just looking at the power of the tongue against resistance.